Hey, this is Russell and I work at the video store, the place that we can all go to once a week whenever it is movie night. I love this job because when the store is quiet, I get to watch movies and series and talk about them with my friends that work here and then interesting people also pop in to rent something. We're here to help you figure out what to watch. All right, let's do it. Let's open up the shop. Good morning, Gad. Hey, Rusky. How are you, man? Yeah, it was uh, quite a weekend. Yeah, was it? Yeah. Good. Um, we'll get into it in a moment. Uh, hello, everyone. Today on the show, Cindy Swanepoel is going to pop in to rent something at our lovely video store here. She uh, is very well known, um, probably most famous for Binnelunders, but uh, she is now in the really great, super fun very well made uh, Showmax original cook. Cook, cook. which is, cook. Uh, you'll see, has got to do with uh, Cook Sisters in a very uh, uh, interesting way. <laughs> I'll get into it that way. Um, but very smart show. This is Christian Olwachen, who has done a bunch of incredible stuff in South Africa. And um, it's a really well made show. And, and I'm just so happy for her that. She can really sink her teeth into such a cool role. Sink her teeth into some cook sisters. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think once you see the show, you'll, you'll understand how, how that might have now been a very precarious statement. But no, it's a lovely show. Um, for those who are just joining, welcome. We've got ourselves a great day here at the video store. I am joined by the dashing Gad. Gad, the, the, what, did, what did we call you the other day? Um, the Great Gadsby. Great Gadsby. Oh. Shout out to Christina and the lovely name she gave you. Um, we are going to have Cindy pop in, but after uh, our chat with Cindy, myself and Gail are going to have a fat chat about what we're watching um, on streaming platforms and in cinemas. Have you got some stuff to chat about, Gad? Most definitely. Okay. Some yeah. weird, some interesting, some cool stuff. Some cool things. A lot of nostalgia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll get into it. Have you got something to keep you busy while I chat to Cindy? Yeah, I can play some Scrabble on my phone. Play some Scrabble on your phone. That's all, all I right. do these days. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's get into it. This is Cindy Swanepoel popping in to rent something. How's it? Hey. How are you? I'm lekker. How are you? I'm great, man. Way. It's 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 been a long time. I couldn't believe when I saw you. I didn't know I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> Yo, it's been a long time. Like I was uh, in Mabuneng. That's where we met. Yeah. So when um, the Showmax folk were like, you know, cooks the new show. And, yeah. um, you know, do you want to chat to Cindy? I was like, hold on. I Who's that? I remember her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now we're actually going to have a proper talk because we never did. We were always like, how's it? Hey, what are you doing? I don't know. Cool. Bye. Yeah. Well, you did a lot of stuff next door at Pop Art. Yes. And so, you know, which for those who don't know, for the first 10 years, pretty much of the Bioscope, we had our friends run a theater space next door to us mm. called Pop Art. Shout out to Haley, who yeah. has obviously done a lot of stuff. At the Bioscope, she's even been on the video store, which is lovely. Um, but we had these like two indie cultural spaces next door to each yeah. other, which was so great. Was there was such a nice live performance energy. And of course, there was the, you know, the Bioscope, yeah. which was the film energy. And we were the first. Uh, I started, uh, I had a company, uh, Poco Productions, which we did Shadow Puppetry. And we did our first, first show at Pop Art. And I think it was Pop Art's first show that they... Um, you know, I had oh, my fucking uh, you can speak English is great. In between. Yeah, okay, I will. <laughs> so, this is the first show that Pop or Doho did, and we were the first. Yeah, the, so did they like of, produce it? The sort of what they sort of got behind, or? Mm, yes, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They didn't just they didn't just let you use. They sort of helped you create. Helped it. us with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I remember you doing. I was and I and and just to you know rejig my memory, I was like. Ahead of you coming, I was like, just to confirm, this was the shit they did shadow puppets, yes. right? And so that was cool. You 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 basically had a light 
and you and you had literally shadows. Yeah, so it was a light and a screen, and we made everything. It was the hardest work I've ever done. Now I know, you know, but that's the whole thing of putting in hours, right? Yeah, yeah. You put in hours into something, and then you learn to do a sh- the shortcut of something. Or, but that's mm. the only way you like get your your stripes. You earn your stripes by by doing it. So we yeah. did. I don't know. We worked for more than a month. We worked on this little show called Yanagi, and it was oh, it was just beautiful. There was like a sort of Japanese ness to it. Hey, yeah, exactly. Y- yeah, it was based on the based on the. Uh, a blue willow pattern. You always get it on cups, the little stories told on the Chinese cups. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just beautiful, uh, magic. So it was almost like sort of uh, overhead projector sort of transparencies, right? Yes. With and then cutouts and, and, you, and then you sort of put them in front of the light and you you did this whole play. You did, we did a whole play like for an hour long just... Yeah. With Do those sets still exist somewhere? Have you kept yeah, them safe? I've got Yanagi in the garage still. Okay. It was, that's the precious one. But yeah. all the shit we've made, I mean, it's yeah. endless. We can tell so many stories. It's there. the it's the 10,000 hours. Are you familiar with that term? Uh, no, but I think it I was a, a New York Times journalist, Malcolm Gladwell. He's written a bunch of books. But there was one called Outliers, which was about how, you know, the people at the top of their craft have spent roughly 10,000 hours more than their counterparts because they, you know, oh. Tiger Woods has hit more golf balls. Yes, sure. Uh, Michael Schumacher was racing go karts at at three or four. You know, so they've yeah. like they, they they you know the Beatles very famously played in Hamburg in these strip clubs before they were well known before the the, the Cavern era and what people know to be the start of the Beatles. Before that, they were slumming it in Germany, playing in strip clubs for six hours Gee. at a go. So they. They honed their craft. Yeah. And exactly. so and they put in those hours. Yeah. I I oh, I wholeheartedly believe in that. I mean, you do get jack of all trades, most of none, but I, th- I But you know the other part of there's the there's the second part of that phrase that most people don't know. What's that? So so that expression jack of all trades, master of none sounds depressing, which yes. is like you're not actually good at anything. Exactly. But there's a there's a second part to that phrase and I'm going to misquote it, but it's something like I'd rather be a jack of all trades than none, or something like that. There's there's a second oh, half okay. to that phrase, so don't don't. So you kind of go, okay, that's fine. Don't think it's bad that you're the jack of all trades yeah. because it's better than being nothing. Yes, well, that's what I yeah. also also always thought. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. But you need to put in the hours in all of those. So it depends on yeah. also how good are you at all these things, or yeah. how much time did you spend on uh, on them? You know, like the yeah. shadow puppetry. Hours and hours and hours and hours. So I always thought, you know, anyone else can try this, but they've not done what I've done and mm. will they be um, willing to, you know? Yeah. And it's the same with with acting for me. It's all I've ever wanted to do. I because, just, yeah, because what's interesting is that with the shadow puppetry, that's more storytelling, yeah. writing. Yes. Because it's not your face acting. Yes. You then went on to now, you know, the, one of the reasons why you're here today is because of the TV show Cook. Yes. That's why we're chatting. But so you've been an actress. That's all I've ever wanted to do, but I had to I had to become um a master of a few other things around sure. the acting. I think that, that is what, what make builds character and that is what what I always think of, of it as a I was a four tracker when I was a kid. Yeah. Like a scout. But but you get your kentekens, so you get like your little stripes of of uh, uh, um, knotting, doing, yeah, making yeah, yeah. knots, yeah, or yeah, yeah. lantern bekruip, or uh, identifying poo in the field, or <laughs> like you get uh, uh, for uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. horse it's your badge, riding, it's your badges. Yeah, yeah, making yeah. soap, all that shit. So yeah, you yeah. you get your badges, and you have to earn them. You can't just get them. Yeah. And for me, I feel like I've got so many badges from like puppetry and breathe. It teaches Breathing. you how to breathe, yeah. you know, and putting life into something with just breath. Yeah. Or radio, or like there's so many things I've done, um, and especially children's theatre, which I've had like eight years behind me of okay. grafting, blood sweating, focal pay, you know, and yeah. really just going and making the children laugh and um, characterizing and uh, uh, the difference between the monkey and the elephant. You know, the kids weren't allowed to see that I'm the same actor. Like, I was hectic about that. Okay. So, <laughs> I am proud now of the journey. Then I was like, oh, please let it be done. But that's all I wanted to do, you know. That's lovely. 
<laughs> I uh, I took a brief holiday job because I was more of the film student. But we did a little bit of we had to do a little bit of acting at yeah. the start of things at Vits, and um, and so I got a I got a sense of the acting. Yeah, like when you talk about breath and and yeah. understanding and knowing how to use your diaphragm and breathing. But I thought it was fucking hilarious that, you know, for an hour I was lying on the floor going, ha, ha, <laughs> while, you know, while, yes. in the, while in the building next door there was some engineering student like pulling I'm their <laughs> hair out and I'm going, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm studying hard right no, but now. I, no, but it yes. makes sense and I get it and it is important. Yeah. But um, I've, I've I had exactly the same when I was studying. Uh, I was in a race called Goldfields in Stellenbosch. And we we had men also stayed there because um, usually raises were just women and yeah, just yeah. men. And um, the the guys always mocked me and were like, "What the fuck do you do when you study yeah. drama? Are you just yeah. like running around like an idiot and doing breath work?" And I remember the one day I was studying something uh, theater studies, and uh, the one guy was passing my room, and I was just moving my hands around like. Yeah. And I said, I called him. I said, "Hey, hey, listen." does this look like water? And I'm very serious, showed him. I'm like, I'm trying to study how, what it looks like, you know, like yeah. kind of like, fuck you, okay? We also do other things. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, you got to put that, 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 all that time in. And, and so I did this, yeah. I did this, um, I did this one stint as a, a, a part of a troupe that did these kids' plays over like a Christmas break. And yeah. I was like, I can't do this. Yes, it's hard work. I was like, I literally, the moment I, I was like, everything's fine. Literally up until I was like in the Pinocchio outfit, <laughs> about to go on stage oh. in like some wing of like some shopping mall somewhere yeah. in South Africa. <laughs> yes. And I was like, I can't do this. It's hectic. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't, I can't be it's this really guy. really like your ego. You need to like really set that aside and really. Totally. No, and you, and you just got to be happy to, you know, play the fool in, in, the, in the best, yes. best way. But I was like. I'm also that person that when I talk to a little kid, I don't I don't put on a baby voice. Yes, I, I sort of speak to them as like a little adult, you yeah, know, that, that, for better or for worse. That. Yeah. And so the moment I had to now talk to these kids, I was like, "Hello, I can't, I can't do the baby." Voice. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're in that, you know, that outfit, like mm. I've worn so many mascot suits, and uh, yes, yeah, see, it, uh, the amount I don't know, were you sweating because sure, sure. yes, yeah, see, I I sweat. Yeah. I think I lose like a whole human when after a show like that. Yeah, I'm the, a bit of a schwitzy guy. So yeah. yeah, so sort of sweaty Pinocchio is not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking to the kids like an adult. That's your... Like, the, no part of that worked out. So I, I never got a call back the next the next uh, season. <laughs> this act, it's, yeah, it's, it's just I have so much respect for people who, who still do that. And, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, th- mm. this hard work. But um, here we are with this nice amazing tv show mm. and i just have to say I'm, I'm i've started it i'm like well into it yeah I, I, I think you're amazing man yes thank you yeah. okay. thank so, you so much. cook which is on cook. show max yeah. cook. i love how english people say it. my fiance is also english i was also got a cook yeah well, it's like pup he also says pup <laughs> <laughs> your yeah. uh your fiance yeah. is craig obani yeah which is amazing. Most beautiful man in the world. He's a handsome man. He's a handsome fucker. And also, like, <laughs> every woman makes me understand that. It's but he's so like, interesting. But he's like, he's like a silver foxy yeah, handsome man. Ridiculous. But I, uh, Jesus, I've, I have I was a fan of the Buddy Holly show. Yeah. And he yes. was one of the Buddy Hollies. He, he was, was one of the, Buddy, yeah. He was one of the original Buddy Hollies. Yes. Uh, we had his CD when I was a kid. Like, we listened to his voice. Because it was Craig's voice on that CD. On the CD, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the CD that we all bought. Yeah, we, we all went, had it. We all went to the Buddy Holly show and we all bought the yeah. CD. So we had that. It's crazy how that works out. No, he's, he's amazing. He's so Yeah, funny. and then he was recently in um, We Will Rock You. Yeah, and he just finished. And he's just, um, he was he was the fun trap dad yes. in, in Sound of Music. Sound of Music, yeah. Were amazing. you proud of him? Did you go watch oh, him a lot? Yeah, I saw it three times and then I said, I, I can't. Now everything's earworming me. I can't yeah, yeah, do yeah. it anymore. So I watched it like three times as my max. Yeah. Then I'm done. Because I'm, you know, even though we're both actors, uh, musical theatre is not my world at all. I, okay. I don't sing. I was about sing. to say, is that, is that, oh, you're not a triple threat. I'm not, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I would have been, I would, you know, it would have been amazing as a, yeah, but yeah. yeah, no, dancing out, but singing, I can do, you know, I just pretend I can sing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
if that makes sense. Okay, so musicals have never been what no. you shoot for. No, I had a, a really hectic, when I was younger, uh, like in my 20s, I tried to go for We Will Rock You, actually. And oh, cool. I got a call back that day, um, and I went for the dancing part. And that's the part that fucks me up. I can't do it. Okay. I can dance. Okay? I can break it down, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not yeah, choreography yeah. style, yeah, like yeah. actual dance. Step and slide Yeah, vibes. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so no, 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 no. And then I, my nose was bleeding that night. I remember the, the dancers, the dancers, the, they taught us the dance for the the callback. Yeah. And um, and then they, you had to go two two at a time. Oh yeah. my god. And I literally went. They went five, six, seven, eight, and I walked out. I just went. Fuck this. No, I can't. Well, well how did your nose bleed? Then I cried so much, oh, my right. nose bled. Okay, I was about to say, like, <laughs> what happened? I was waiting for, like, some yeah, dramatic story. Foul, yeah, it's not. It was okay. dramatic for me, yeah. Okay, so you didn't even give it, you didn't even... Nah, I was okay. out. I was yeah. like, okay, I'm not coming back. No. Um, but uh, Cook... Uh, <laughs> yes, nice. Is, um, <laughs> it's quite a serious dramatic role. I mean, it gets funny, yeah. which is so great. But what I have to applaud the whole show for is that it launches you in within, within two minutes. Five yeah. minutes. And I think South African shows or perhaps perhaps an industry that's not like like well versed. So let's just say like the American yes. um the American T V system. They they are so well versed at their genres or at their T V shows that they can be very good at at just getting you sucked in quickly. Yeah. Where perhaps a a a, a sort of more underworked um Industry could could perhaps take a little bit longer. Yeah, it's sometimes like spoon feeding for so yeah, long. Yeah, and perhaps we don't quite know how smart the audience is, or yeah. perhaps we still got to kind of feel like we need to establish our characters. Or so sometimes a TV show in South Africa can can move a little bit slower. Yeah, but but this is a great smart show where within within um, five minutes we know you're married because you wake up next to the guy. We know you're a mom because we've got the kids shouting and, and you know the chaos of, of being a parent yeah. and then we discover that the husband is cheating on you yeah. and you act the fucking pants off that moment yeah. because like you, you your, your whole world has changed now where all of a sudden you're like what? Yeah. Um, exactly. And then of course the rest of the show is, is you de- you know bringing in private detectives or discovering this world yeah um, it's all ep one, right? Like yeah. the first when I read the script, the first episode, I I, I was like, I, c- I can't actually believe this is this is happening. I couldn't wait to read the second episode, yeah, because it ends so like also. It's yeah. like, we're, we're, oh shit, yeah, this woman is in deep shit, and 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 it starts off with a man whose uh, kidneys removed. Like it's that it first starts with Jack Barrow. Oh yeah, that's it. right. Yeah, so yeah, first yeah. like what? It's oh yeah, that's right. Me. You get you get a sense of this sort of like weird basement yeah. where where he has clearly done something he's cheated on yeah. his partner too, and he's now being tied up and yeah. yeah, so that's great. It gives you it foreshadows just how crazy this yes. this show's gonna get. Yes, because that that's the clever part for me. Sure, this woman and her li- like little life. But what the fuck happened in the beginning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's so clever. And that's interesting because I almost forgot that that happened. Yeah. That yeah. you see you see this character, funny enough, played by Jack Perry, yeah. who <laughs> recently was on the show. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's yeah. cool to like meet him. I, we, I didn't even bring that up because I hadn't even um, seen that part yet. Oh, yeah. Um, how did this all come to you? How, how, how it did this literally came to me. I, I couldn't believe it. I was... Uh, um, I was in, on a, a soapy called Binnenlander for eight years. Sure, sure. Um, and and I, I decided last year that I need to do some other things. I think like I'm, I just want to see if there's work out there for me, and I really want to. Uh, I think now my toolkit is is big, and 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 I want to explore that and my yeah, my yeah. badges, you know, yeah. see if I can use them. And so I, I ended my contract and. Um, it's just been incredible. I got a phone call from my agent who just said uh, it's a Chris, Christian Ulwogen, um creation. Wait, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to just chat about him for a sec because yeah. I've I've never met him, but I've been quite a strong admirer of yes, everything that too. he's done. Yeah, I mean, like, so I my entry to him was uh, Canary. Mm. Um, what was the film? CMU. Um, yeah. uh, Johnny's need. 
do yeah, it. Yeah, Johnny is need do it. Need. Yeah. So so this is a filmmaker f- which for me can really hold your hand with so much confidence. Jeez. And I think that yeah. so so often in a production, no matter how wild or how crazy or whatever th- sort of themes you're exploring, what you want from a filmmaker is you want them to sort of reach out, take your hand, and you feel confident that, that you're yeah. happy to go on this ride with them. Uh, that, even just reading the script, you already went, I was like, wow. This and is- Yeah, and so there's a couple of scenes, and especially the one, there's one in Canari, which um, stars Kalt Poseidon out, and and it's it's a scene that's structured in such a way that it's this long, planned, yeah. orchestrated scene in the barracks of this army um, um, barracks. Um, <laughs> but it shows you that he's thought it through. Yeah, yeah. He's there, a man of likes a rehearsal and he yeah, likes a, um, it, it. Everything about it felt very well planned yes. and rehearsed. And then, then you once you are aware of that or not, you realize like there's your confidence in watching what this guy does. Yeah. Because you know he's thought it through. There's nothing worse than the film where you're like, who's he? Yeah. Why is he doing that? Exactly. What? And then you realize like the whole movie was like very clear in the director's head, but perhaps they haven't had the practice. Oh, I've had so many of that. Or the experience yeah. to sort of convey that across. Yeah. Where you have to constantly think about what the audience member knows. Yeah. yeah. And doesn't know. And sometimes they give you too much. Yeah. You know, you can watch a film where you're like, I don't understand who this is or why this is. And you realize you're missing stuff. And then sometimes you're like, I get it. Move on. Like, yeah. We know Thank this. Thank you. Like, okay. do we, we don't have to have the joke and then have you explain it. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Or like a plot lot. where the characters go, now we need to go and do this. Yeah. Then from here, we must go and do that. Yeah. And you're like, we I know can't. this. Show me. Don't yeah. tell me. Exactly. So, but, so it, Christian didn't, um, he was busy working on uh, another film, so he couldn't direct. But he did uh, come in for the first about two weeks to just kind of okay. But it was guide. his baby in the sense that he did he create the story. Yes, yes. And then he worked with the writers, um, yeah. so co-wrote. Um, and so his influence was definitely in there. Yeah. Um, so just to have him on set for the first while was also – because you we have to give it to Johannes Peter Nall. He was the director yeah. and DOP. Yeah. And he's, that's crazy. Like oh, that's to do both is, yeah. is insane. Um, and Johan, I worked with on a previous uh, a comedy series, uh, Magda Lau, mm. which I just finished about like a month before we started Cook. So which, it was great that we worked together also and we kind of got the sense of each mm. other. Um, and Johan, uh, Johan let us play. He let us play a lot and we ask a lot of questions. So like we bombard him. And I think it was great that... Uh, Christian was there in the beginning, so he could check Christian's style. Mm. And we just kind of picked it up from there. From an actor's point of view, um, the way in which he Christian asks questions to make it real for you. Okay. It's like he'll take a script. Because I was fearful that I might be very soapy style right now. Mm. Like I, and I didn't know what's the difference anymore between soap or film. Yeah. Um, so I was very scared of that, and and be, especially because the role was kind of just given to me. I didn't need to audition. Mm. Um, you you know that there's a lot of st- at stake. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, Christian used to go, no, 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 no. Just it's it's too soapy. The dialogue's not flowing. Okay. It's like you speak, I speak. You speak, I speak. It's it's not. That's okay. not how we do shit. It's yeah. not how you and I speak. You know. We're talking over each other a exactly. bit. Exactly. Yeah. Overlapping is fine. It should be. Yeah. Um, and also we say fuck if we want to say fuck. Yeah. That makes it real for you. Yeah. So I'm yeah. a, you know, I'm someone who swears and that's where my comedy lies is I, I struggle to, I can't really be funny if I can't say fuck with it. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> and of course Afrikaans is just such a, um, yeah, it's such a great language oh, to swear in. It's more, <laughs> yes, it's perfect for it's very, it's made very, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> swear, uh, he was uh, hectic about making it yours. Okay. Making it truthful. How would I say it? And then he'd say subtext, subtext. So okay, just... so that's what you mean by he would ask you a question, Yo, which is interesting would... because you would imagine the normal relationship between actor and director is the actor asking the director questions. Sure. Do you want this? Do you want that? Yeah. Okay, so you were finding it was more the other way around. Other him, way around, like, or more like he would be. He would say, "Remember where you're coming from." So he'd remind you uh, um, where her state of mind is. Um, all the shit that's happened to her, her past, so he's, he's mm. subtext all the way. Okay. And then he talk you into that so much that you're like, it's almost like psyching you up to go, mm. 
yo, fuck, that's hectic. Oh my God, I want to cry now because I feel all of that. Yeah. And that's great. Is that that's a director who understands a character mm. and who's able to give you answers if you have any questions. And also he'll ask you, where are you coming from? So let's, but not like in a way where you feel interrogated to go, fuck, I'm Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but he just, he, he, uh, he understood everything about the character. Yeah. But uh, one of the one of the badges we can all wear on our on our scout uniform <laughs> is life experience, mm. and and you know you can't write these stories, you can't act them, you can't direct them unless you've got a good sense of the world and life and you know what it feels like, what it could feel like to have your husband cheat on you, exactly, you know, and, and see that whole world fall apart. You yeah, know? it's like it's ah. Oh, I kind of tapped my our, in my sister is a bit of a nerd. Um, she's a, a real tani, you know. She's like four years older than I am, and she's a mom. She's got two kids, yeah. and she okay. lives for her family. Yeah. Uh, it's and it's beautiful, you know. Everyone, yeah. your thing is your thing, and but she's like proper or family is or family. And when yeah. I I th- thought if that ever happened to her, what would she do? Because she can be scary. Yeah. Once you fuck with their family, it's the uh, the the bully strength, yes, which is like how you'd pick up the car to you know save your kid. Or, Precise, yeah, that's yeah. it. Become like yeah. so. I just kept thinking, what would my sister do? And she she also has, and then combine it with my sense of humor and mm. a bit of then you've got a like a combination of Christelle. Lovely yeah. man. Yeah. Um, let's get a little sense of you now. Yeah. Let's let's go through a little journey. We've got our, our our four great loves, which are the films that you've watched and loved, uh, and sort of had an impression on you over your life. Um, and it's a nice way to get a sense of you, because we now know where you are. You've done shadow puppetry, and you you know acted and been in soaps, and you're now on this lovely Showmax um, show. But let's go let's go back. Like uh, where where did we grow up? I um, grew up in Pretoria okay. until like standard six, then we moved to Durbanville. Okay. Oh. Um, so we've got our first film, which is the Puppy Love film, which is one of the first big films you can remember. Um, yeah. Usually a fun, innocent film, usually something someone showed to you. Can you think of what Yeah, it's uh, the, definitely The Little Mermaid for many years. Like okay. that was my film. I was a mermaid. <laughs> I still in my mind think I am a mermaid. I love, like I did like mermaid classes the other day where you what like go it? and swim. Oh, <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen that show? There's I that haven't, show no, on, on, on Netflix Mer called people, Mer yeah. People, which is all about the industry of people who are professional mermaids. I know. I'm... I'm I have such a fascination for people who do that. Uh, uh, I've created a character now that I've won a film, like a short story of this woman who lives as a mermaid. Um, and the ending is so like, I love a twist. But it's because of The Little Mermaid. And okay. I heard that they do the mer people thing. And then I just went for a class of like yeah. swimming e- episode, with a fin. Episode one is just sort of them complaining about, you know, the chlorine in their eyes. Oh, that's great. Because, you know, they have to have their eyes open. You can't, you oh. can't have a mermaid do a show <laughs> through the glass window of the aquarium and her no, not can't. open her eyes. No, <laughs> it'll break every little kid's dream, you know. Um, that's amazing. Okay. No, it was a lovely film. Yeah, I've got a I've got a sad story about the Little Mermaid. Like the Little Mermaid really connects okay. a lot of things in my life. Okay, um, let's and hear it. Because I was so inspired by mermaids, and um, I tried swimming like it. I wrote a character for it, which it will still be done. Yeah. Um, and my mom died when I was nineteen years old. Uh, she fell from stairs in our house, and that oh, night, shit. my dad took her to the hospital. She was brain dead, but we we had no idea at that time that that okay. was the case. Okay. So. As he took her to the hospital, we were waiting, me and my sisters, and we had a video of uh, The Little Mermaid because I was – that's the only thing I always took out when we went to the video shop, Yeah, Little Mermaid. Yeah. Um, and, and we popped that in and I remember we were watching The Little Mermaid before my dad gave us the fucking bad news. Yeah. Yeah. At, so, at that point, you'd watched it a lot? Yeah, fuck, okay. like, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. No, so we it just, wasn't we like just it was like, the first time? Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 but it's interesting that that it's that that movie is is sort of pinned to that moment. Like yeah. you watched it hundreds of times, but the one that sticks out was the night. That. Yeah. How young were you? I was nineteen. Yeah, it was uh, like a week before my nineteenth. Yeah, see, I I watched The Little Mermaid for uh, years. Okay, okay. So so obviously <laughs> you were very well aware of what was going on. Yeah, yeah. But at that moment, when there was kind of nothing you could do, 
yeah. you were like, I need my comfort blanket. Exactly. I need, oh, that's I need beautiful. something to kind of distract me yeah. mentally for a moment because mm. if, I'm, if I'm left alone <laughs> yeah. with my thoughts for perhaps a bit too long, this could be a problem. Yeah, so, so I let's just need to, let's go to Ariel. And sa- let's go to the safety. Let's go to the safety. Yeah, oh, interesting. Um, okay, so Little Mermaid. You growing up in Pretoria, very landlocked, so we yeah. couldn't we couldn't sort of see the sea, but <laughs> we could still uh, imagine it. I was happy. You, happy you'd, kid. you'd love this. Um, my, um, I guess you could call her my future niece. So my my uh, my fiance's um, niece uh, had a mermaid party as a oh. sort of three four year old, and she had this lovely um, tail dress which yeah. she was wearing, obviously oh, above yes. ground. And then it came time <laughs> to swim. And uh, I watched her mom go like, okay, you got to take off the tail now so that you can swim. And I was like... I mean... A- as, I, as I saw that, I was like, oh, no. That doesn't make and then, sense. And then I even turned and I said, you're going to have to convince <laughs> the little mermaid that she can't wear her tail exactly. in, the, in the pool. Because she immediately then just bucketed crying. Because she yeah. was like, I can't... That I doesn't can't, make sense. I can't do that. And then so the mom was like, okay, you can give it a try. And so... Um, there were older <laughs> kids that could help her, but she was then in the pool with this tail on, like oh, basically it drowning. It is so just with difficult. Her, just with her little head, like just at the water <laughs> top, just to breathe because she had to. She had to wear the Obviously. tail in the water. And then, and then after a little while, she's like, okay, I do get my mom's logic. I can't be an actual mermaid. But oh, it was so dude. funny. I was like, you, you, I don't think you know what you've just... Yeah. Uh, you just what? tell the mermaid to take her tail off to go swim. Yeah. That's, like That's not, not going to Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, lovely. Very, uh, yeah, interesting story when you look back on it now. Like yeah. a woman having to make these sacrifices for her man. Yeah. So that's interesting. Also, yeah. the uh, the original story was a lot worse. Yeah, it was hectic. She like cut her legs off or so something. They became or, they became what? part of the uh, Hans Christian Andersen wrote. Actually, re- no, I said Grimm, the brothers Grimm. No, I think I think that the uh, Little Mermaid was Hans Christian Andersen. Is it? Yeah, yeah. But but the, his stories were actually quite hectic. If you really, uh, if you didn't Disneyfy it, um, yeah, yeah. But they they become part of the 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 sea bella funny was she on like the 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 bubbles of the ocean. Yeah. So she she had to kill his wife, yeah. the woman he chose. Yeah. And and then she could be with him, but yeah. she couldn't kill him, so she became part of the the bubbles funny ocean. Oh, God. So we had a we had a a, a, a vinyl uh, when I was a kid. Yeah, oh, it was so lovely, and um, the witch was like, "Hey, come in!" You heard all these like bubbles yeah, and stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. just lovely, all in your ears. Lovely. And uh, this witch was cock scary. Yeah, and because um, especially if you were listening to the audio only, because then yeah. you were imagining this witch it's in your head, look. which was far scarier than anyone could have. Yeah. yeah. So then, and in this story, it did not end well. Yeah, it was quite. And um, I loved also another little fun fact is that the. The Ursula we know, the the, the Disney Ursula, yeah. was very much based on drag queens, and like her yes. her outfit and her makeup. But was it really? I think so. But I think she, they she took, looks like yeah. It, there's yeah. Um, Divine, which was that very famous drag queen. Yes, and people have said that that ah, took a lot of cool. inspiration. Yeah. Love Ursula. Always yeah. wanted to play her. Yeah, always wanted to. Lovely. Okay, so now we go over to high school. You're yes. still in Pretoria, hey? When did you say you moved? St- moved to high school when I was... Oh, ach, moved to high school. Mid- to Durbanville in Standard 7. So just Standard 6. And then that okay. was quite hectic to move to a new mid, school. Mid-high school? Yeah. Oh, that's a bit Also, tough. into Cape Town, we, we, people were like, we don't like people from to Transvaal at yeah. that time. Yeah. You know? You're like, what the fuck did I do? Yeah. Well, I did know. you find them clicky bitches? Clicky bitches also <laughs> mocking my accent. <laughs> like, just dicks. Cape, Cape, <laughs> yeah, Cape Town doesn't, doesn't have a great rap when it yeah. comes to that. Eh? Why are they like okay, that? Okay, so you, you found that. Cause, yeah. Because my memory of you um, from the pop art days that we're talking about, I just remember you being very... Um, Salt of the earth. I just remember you being just such a happy, that's like a, l- like a person. I remember yeah. just thinking like, she's cool. Like yeah. she's fun. And I Ach think like maybe barefoot, you know, yeah. that, that's my sort of memory of yes. you. Okay. So Cape Town didn't like you. No, they didn't like me. Okay. No, no I, it took me quite a while. And, and my family, we struggled. We were really happy. Why did you career. need to move? My dad got 
a job, okay. different, a good job. What I did he know. do? Uh, Afrikaans, I'm going to have to say this. Yeah, yeah. I was a tak bestieder by Premier Foods, branch manager. Okay. So I don't know, I think he just got a better job. I we had no idea. I love the fact that like, out the out the gate, you couldn't name what it was, <laughs> but you, you needed to say it first in exactly. Afrikaans to then like see it written out and go, okay, I know what that That's is. That's exactly. When me and Craig have a fight, I can't yeah. fucking fight in English. Yeah, yeah. Because I, and then I go, <laughs> let me just say, it. I need to say it in this and then I need, because he'll sometimes go, what? Did, what? Yeah. I go, shut up. You try and fight yeah. in, in another language. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult. Yo. No, no, no. Even you're to say my number or something, I have to do it in Afrikaans first. Your instinct is to... Is to come out of that first that, that, <laughs> that's the that's the middle of your onion is, is very yeah. Afrikaans yeah, yeah poor Corey yeah. yeah yeah okay um, so okay so, yeah, uh, once once there did you manage to find some people or did you uh, yeah, eventually what, what, what was your uh, what was your defining high school movie do you have any thoughts I, I mean I, I I think it was um, a pretty woman cool yeah Richard Gere. See, and now I have that. Guy <laughs> Fox. <laughs> you were manifesting it back I in high school like where you're like, I need a I need a silver I want fox that. in my life. I went that. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I loved it. And lay a whisper <laughs> at the yeah. end, you know. Oh, it was more I that loved put, that. That put women. rock set on the map. Proper. That, yeah. that song you're like, right. catapulted them to another yeah. echelon as a band, yeah. I loved Pretty Woman. It was, um, I just remembered, it was a feel-good movie. It was some, there were some sex scenes in it. Not um, hectic though. I think he kissed her there on the, on the piano was the, was the worst, mm. like the most sensual one, I suppose. Do you know that it was originally going to be a very different movie? How so? Um, the original, there's a, there's a great TV show, I think it's on Netflix, called like How the Movies Are Made or Movies That Made Us. Movies that made us. Yeah. And they tell the original story of how these films got made. Movie, yeah. How they yes. got made or something. Yeah. Um, but Julia Roberts has also spoken about it. The original version was called 3000. Yeah. Because that was the amount of money she was going to be paid for oh, the wow. weekend. And, and it ended quite dramatically. It ended with them going separate ways. or It, it, was, it was far more like she's a prostitute, he's a guy. Yeah, I... And and then and then it got shelved and it then it got passed around and perhaps different executives of the studios because you know you you know this like a script can be bought yeah. so then it's oh. out of the writer's hands and then it just sits yeah sometimes they bought and never made I mean a wow. lot of scripts are bought and just never so made. many ideas lying around they're just there. sitting on a shelf and then yeah. eventually it got handed to that director who was like. There's a heartwarming story in here, and it, and it was a whole different movie. I, right in the end. I do like movies with endings that you're like, oh fuck, no mm. man. Mm. I love twists, and I love it when I actually do not like happy endings. Are it's 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 boring. It's it boring. can be, yeah, yeah. It's just like it because it's always also a beginning of something. You know, there's a yeah. thing of and they they. Lived, lived happily, happily or ever after with uh, in a marriage you're like mm, sure yeah the cuck starting now <laughs> that's what's happening <laughs> i can i can very much agree to that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like it's, yeah. it's that's not the truth and that's what we put into kids minds of yeah. like mm, are they, are they, yeah are they? the best the best is a film like this is 40 <laughs> yeah you know have you seen that comedy it's no. like a romantic comedy but it's uh, Paul Rudd, and it's it's basically almost like a sort of spin-off of Knocked Up. Cool. So it's Paul Rudd, and, and I forget the woman's name, but she's actually um, um, Judd Apatow's wife in real life. Um, but the This Is 40 is, is basically about this relationship, you know, when they've been married for a handful of years. Yeah. They're in their 40s. Okay. It's like, how do you keep it spicy? How uh, do you yeah. keep it full of respect and love? Yeah, and because it's it takes a lot of work. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I we, I'm doing a play now, which uh, I conceptualized with uh, my team. Um, uh, we have an incredible writer and director, and, but we also workshopped it. Yeah. But it was it's based on um, ach, it's uh, basically a couple who when they wake up in the morning, it's it's uh, years later married. Mm. They're a Siamese twin, so they're stuck to each other's heads. Because, you know, that's the thing about marriage is you okay. you, you speak for the other person and yeah. you become, you, you're not yourself anymore. You lose yeah. yourself in yeah. this. 
So it's about them. They just started like glued together. They became glued together? Yeah, so okay. uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, no, obviously it's fantastical. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. But how lovely. Yeah, so Wait, we so, moved. Af- so so after a while they've now they've now found themselves. The play starts with them in bed together and they talk and yeah. and then as they get up, you see that they're stuck together. So they move as one. Okay. It was fucking hard to rehearse that. But yeah, yeah. so then eventually you see how they met. So they'll split up and we'll see how they met and who they were. What a lovely before they What a lovely visual representation of Yeah. It. Yeah, yeah. It's and where cool. are you with this play? We're doing it at uh we did it at Art Club last year and this now we're going to any Boss Festival and Fri uh Okay. What's it Yeah, yeah. What's the play called? Ian. Ian, yeah. lovely. One. And are you acting in it? Yeah, me Thank and you. Zach Hendricks. He's one of my okay. best friends. Yeah. Okay. So we, I mean, it's great that I have someone who I really know so well because we just kind of moved together already as yeah. one. But you also like what's wonderful is, or very difficult to rehearse was the fact that we do move together because we have to. Yeah. And we, I have to know where Zach is going. Otherwise, yeah. we, we split. Yeah. And but, then the... But and the as the characters, we have to show that we don't want to. So we have to be like constantly fighting against moving together. So you move together, but you don't. Oh, that's oh. fucking Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. But so, yeah, that's what okay. happens, I think, in marriage. You. Yeah, uh, you can. You can have them. Be careful, I think. Mm. The, best, the best combination is that you two together make three, or whatever the kind of uh, yeah. expression is. But you, you've, you've got to make each other better as opposed to you me sort us. of fill the whole you know yeah 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 um so okay. Li- yeah, that's okay so pretty <laughs> woman sorry just to go back high school yeah. we're now in durbanville starting to make some friends yeah foreshadowing the fact that you're going to fall in love with a richard, richard gear looking exactly dude hey listening to buddy ollie yeah. in the background <laughs> <laughs> manifesting that's lovely <laughs> um and then you said you studied in stellenbosch Studied drama at Salem. Okay. Yeah, flopsy, bo- flopsy body stuff. Exactly. Movement, yes, voice. See, that was my first day. So when you said um, with the breathing that you yeah. did, I remember it like I, I was really cock in school. I didn't care about uh, studying. I, I was just, yeah. and we didn't have drama or anything at that time. I mean, I finished when I was uh, in 99. Yeah. So we didn't have phones or any of that. And, yeah. and drama wasn't a subject. Kids yeah. are so lucky now. They have so yeah. many options yeah. um and then i heard that uh they're gonna get a subject drama when we finished our last day at school okay. i was like oh come on man yeah. but okay so i went Shit. to study that and um the teacher or the lecturer said um on the first day okay everyone monkeys we're monkeys and we were running around doing ho, 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 ho. Mm. and i was like what the fuck yeah and you got to take at that point just like you said you got to take your ego out yes be a monkey. Be a monkey. But I th- I was very happy because I was like, I don't have to study, yeah. sit behind a desk and yeah. listen to shit that I'm not interested in. I can run around. Yeah. And- There's two things I'd love to bring up at this point. Yeah. I read something about what are the most time consuming degrees you could ever do with the idea being that the amount of time you've put had to put into your degree outside of just the hour of sitting in the lecture And by virtue of that, does that make it one of the hardest degrees to do because of how much time you've you've got to put in? Sure. And it was a ranking of these degrees. And I think number one was something like architecture, where where it just takes so much out of you. And I think perhaps medicine was second or third. Mm. But dramatic arts was in top. Oh, top three. I believe that. It was one of those. It was the second. It was. It was un. It was. uh, It was higher than you thought. Wow. was going to be and and i remember going that's true yeah. we put in hours uh. and we weren't even counting those hours no because it just takes so long to to rehearse yes. and play and figure out and workshop and yeah I, that's why i did and and that's the problem why people can't rate when when they say how much do you ask for and you're like well you know i have to create this mm. i just start from scratch and then rehearse and then make shit or like my labor is mm. yeah, i can't really even put a price to it yeah. Yeah. yeah um then the other thing i wanted to bring up is have you heard the the chicken story the marlon brando chicken story mm-hmm. you talking about how in the classroom everyone had to be a monkey yeah so there's a very famous story of marlon brando in an acting class where the teacher said 
you're all chickens and it's the end of the world. And so, and so be chickens. And so apparently everyone in the class ran around chaotically, like, because they said the bomb, (laughs) there's a bomb that's going to go off and it's going to be the end of the world. So everyone became a chaotic chicken except for um, Marlon Brando, who sort of just sat there like a chicken. And they said, well, why are you doing that? And he's like, I'm a chicken. I've got no concept of the end of the world. Oh, that's so true. And I'm just sort of, chilling my tits I'm off. just chilling. My, that's what a chicken would do. He's got no idea that the, that the you know, oh, bomb's going to go off. Think like a chicken. Yeah, what I just would love a that. Do? That's beautiful. Yeah. Have you great, seen Will Ferrell's yeah. uh, kit, um, cat audition for, well, it's an owl audition. No. And he was like, just Google that. It's so funny. Okay. Where he just like plays with a, a ball of a yawn. Yeah. Uh, just. It's, yeah. it's so funny. Okay. It's, animals, yeah, it's great. You know, like that's characterizing for me. Like I've played so many gar- animals. But but know. what's funny, and you also hear these stories of these acting classes where it's not just a simple switch of like be be a chicken yeah. or be a monkey. Sometimes you can do that. I've heard of these acting classes where it's like do that scene but be a little bit of a dolphin. <laughs> And then now be a little bit more of a dolphin <laughs> till eventually you're like, now do the scene full dolphin. <laughs> so it's like you, <laughs> it's hard. That's a great exercise. Where actually. not only do you have to leave your ego at the door, as you we said, don't. but you've got to be playful and you've also got to understand, you know, the subtlety of, of, yes. of just being slightly dolphin. dolphin. <laughs> no, I love that. I think that's such a great idea of, of yeah. finding character, you know, because yeah. like that's I think what I was also scared of with about for cook is yeah. i hope i'm can do her play her differently and not the same as anything else i've ever yeah. done maybe just add a little bit of dolphin a little bit of dolphin <laughs> well um mandla dube who's a, a great filmmaker who's been on the on the show speaks about how his process is he calls it voodoo cinema where what you could basically understand it to be is is him having each character find a, a spirit animal I love that. And and that you would constantly reference which animal you are. You know, you're an eagle. Would an eagle do that? Oh, that's cool. You know, or you're a crocodile and crocodiles wait and they're patient and yes. they're meticulous and they conserve their energy, but they will fucking jump out of the water and kill you. That's very so, cool. So, so... I will apply that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, okay, so here we are at Varsity. Yeah. Um, we're standing at Stellenbosch. We are being Flopsy Buddy, being water. <laughs> Coming into our own, I would imagine, because you now have these classes for a discipline you've sort of always wished for, I'd yes. imagine. Um, so getting happy. to kind of live your dream. What, what films could have come to you at Varsity? I, with uh, no doubt, uh, Muriel's Wedding. Uh, Muriel's Wedding. Mm, mm. Okay. Have you, have you seen it? I know of it. I'm oh. pretty sure I would have seen it. Um, Tony, Tony Collette. Collette. Yes. Yes. Being very authentically Australian. Yeah, very much. Because she, she is Australian. Up so much weight for this. Like she was big. It was her breakout role. It was yeah. very much a breakout role f- or breakout film for Australia. Yes. Yes. Every now and again, there's a film from a sort of smaller film making nation that gets famous around the yes. world like my big fat greek wedding exactly. sort of exposes yeah you know sort of a greekness or Precise. and it becomes like a hard film you know like yeah um it's a muriel's wedding yeah. okay so wh- how did it come to you or wh- my mom loved it okay. and and i think i was like i remember my mom loved it so much and you know i was missing her so okay, I, was I was about like, to say because at the start of varsity was probably yes, when she it was the end passed, of my eh? first year yeah in the yeah. first year yeah yeah so um uh, she just talked about it all the time, so I, I was like, "Oh, I, I want to see this." Okay, so only after she would passed, yeah, did you then seek it out? Yeah, and it, in a way, it was there was a connection to your mom. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it still happens now where I'm like, ah, oh, you know, you you because memories fade, and you only have the same memories over and over because they yeah. can't you can't, they can't get more. Yeah, so so you I think you make things up in your mind eventually, mm. or you just go to what was her favorite that or what did she like there? Or As mm. you get older, you know, you also mm. go, oh, her as a woman and me being that age, yeah. uh, you know, you could try and make connections. M- my mom has a particular plant because yeah. my mom loves gardening. Oh. And so there was a particular flower that my gran had. And so in her 
house, she's made sure to grow it. And this oh. very particular plant that's not a, not too common. Yeah, I don't know I the love name that. of it, but she also then um, puts it in my sister's garden and had put it in my garden. Oh. And it's just like, it's, and she was like, this is like a little bit of a lineage. Yeah, like, oh through the through the plant, yes. which is I lovely, wish we yeah. could do that for each other, you know, because we all like. And so, mo- movies. This movie is that that's in a that. way. Like Precise. perhaps you know, if you do ever have kids, um, yeah. you know, yeah. you can show yeah. them. Yeah, because yeah. 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 some of those films are also very timeless. Yeah, I, and I think so. a Muriel's wedding would be nice. Well, and we timeless. actually showed it to Craig's daughter the other day. Oh, there I was we go. Like, there we go. Yeah. Oh, lovely yeah. man. So I just also, in what, terms what of characterization, them? right, I am an actor who I can love comedy, um, and but comedy is so difficult to play. Yes. It's, it's so hard. Oh, it's fucking hard. hard. Yeah. It is so hard. Yeah. And if it's, you and try to be funny, it, it, you've lost the audience, you know? Yeah, well, c- cut back to why that Will Ferrell yarn thing might have been so funny is because yeah. Will Ferrell actually plays comedy serious. Yeah, precisely. I've said this before. It's, yeah. He's very serious yeah. about what he's doing, and that's exactly. what's funny. He's into it. He's yeah. so, so with, I know with Cook also finding those comedy moments within the ridiculous. Uh, circumstances and mm. um, you just saw someone being shot in front of you and the next moment you have to do something that's like stepping dog poo or but f- there was that moment where as you go into the strip club oh, and, so and, and, and you then whip out your hand sanitizer <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and you were very serious about putting on that, hand sanitizer yeah. like you weren't being funny yeah, but that good. was funny that's yeah. like oh, yeah. oh, I, I even laughed and I, I mean, once you like watch yourself, you're like, okay, girl, I'm always about, are you honest? Yeah. That's all I look at when I watch yeah. myself. Because um, uh, I know, you know yeah. yourself the yeah. best. Yeah. Was when uh, the, at the adult shop with the dildos and the anal beads. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and this girl was like, oh, two for one. And, and people yeah. told me it was so, we, Crystal yeah. went, what? That's yeah. a bargain. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I just thought of my sister in, yeah. a, in a sex shop. Like, what would she do? She'd be <laughs> yeah. so uncomfortable. Yeah. So, yeah, comedy is for me, um, in terms of with Tony Collette, I was like, who is this actress? Okay. Um, I love ABBA, still do. Um, okay. was, there, was there an ABBA soundtrack? ABBA was constant. In the, I mean, she got okay. married on... I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. And it okay. wasn't like Mamma Mia, yeah, the musical, yeah. not at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, It was raw. I just love the rawness of it. The, um, she plays on a little tape player. Uh, you, it, uh, the sound was very real. It just felt yeah. icky, you know. It didn't sit like a... Yeah. I love that. But, but I think what's nice about <laughs> a film like Muriel's Wedding and, and how those films can be those breakout films is that it's quite inspiring for an industry like South Africa. Where you go, yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't. I'm not that familiar with the movie. But Muriel could have been a South African. Totally, completely. You know, obviously it would have yeah. been different South Africanisms as opposed to Australianisms. But sure. if my understanding is correct, it was a small indie film about a woman getting married yeah, in well, the Southern Hemisphere, badly wanting to get married, badly yeah. wanting to get married in yeah. the Southern Hemisphere. Yes. So it's like. It could have been the South African film. Exactly. Like we so could make these kinds of movies. It's, it's the, the possibility of that. Exactly. And also that I, I said to Craig that why is it that foreign films always have people who look like people? Hollywood is just, it's just, no, no one fucking looks like that with their incredible skins, their mm. beautiful bodies and their huge yeah. breasts. Fuck yeah. them. Yeah. I like <laughs> Especially in that sort of big Hollywood rom-com. Yeah, yeah. Net, uh, yeah. It's just unreal and now you can watch people who are people who you can relate to you can go wow that could happen and that's what like for me also i think that's what or it's definitely what what that film meant to me studying drama and also going i never thought someone would want to see me on television i thought i would be doing theater or because i I had a a, quite a bad skin so i was like oh no no one's gonna want to see this face on on tv yeah and i never thinking of myself as like yeah. Uh, beautiful or whatever that that so yeah. I've always just looked for honesty in a performance mm. that's what it's about to me because the first time I did see myself on screen I got a mursa shock because we don't see ourselves every yeah, day yeah it's you like know? hearing your voice for the first time as well yeah. when you're a kid and you're like oh god jeez no one said that yeah so then I went look past that and let's see if you are being honest and that's yeah. that's what Tony Collect 
from that day, I've been a mucha fan of hers. Yeah, she is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yo, right. Even just like the mom and Little Miss Sunshine. And, yeah. Oh. But she's got this little, she's got this way of closing her eyes acting. We all, uh, me and Craig always try and mimic her. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. It's the eyes closing vibes when she gets emotional. Which is having the, having the, okay, that's interesting. Like making the choice to do that, to convey an emotion. Yeah. But it sounds like she almost sort of stops time a bit. Yeah. Because I think you become very conscious of what your face is doing as an actor. Yeah. And you would think that by closing my eyes, I'm now shutting myself off. You can't see me. Yeah. Sure. It takes a bit of confidence to actually close yeah, your I can't eyes do, in front I can't of the do camera. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you should also, as an actor, I think, I think for me, this is all my experience. Like uh, everyone does their own thing. But for me, I need to always have a bit of Cindy with me because I know how... Uh, I get a fright and I know how I laugh. I mm. can't laugh differently because yeah. it'll sound yeah. fake. Yeah, if you're always rooting for some honesty, you, you have to bring yourself in. Yeah. And I think that's the one, one, you know, one of the more ways of approaching General, acting yeah. is to sort of bring yourself in. Yeah, so I think Tony Collette is like a... Yeah. She likes to close her eyes. Interesting. <laughs> um, it's always lovely when you, when you pick up... A, it's something that like you saw from like just to say like a parent and you start doing that kind of facial expression yourself. I don't know whether you've ever picked that up. Yeah. And and you as an adult find yourself doing it and you're like, Oh, that's what my dad is going through when he pulls that oh, face. That's good. And you're like, Oh, that's what that's that means. Because <laughs> I now have the impulse to yes. do and say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, that's more. Yeah, see, I don't have a mother, so No, no. I'm I sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. But there's the dad. With you. Well, we, we, I also don't have a my, my real dad passed away when okay. I was I'm an orphan. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, man. No, I'm, oh, yes. no, no one can see my face. So I'm just yeah. joking. Also no, about no, it. no. All no. About okay. So, sorry, wait, your dad passed away? When I was like standard two. But I have a stepdad. He's, okay. I've been with him since I was like. And you guys are still close? One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my Lovely. dad. Yeah. No, I've, I've got a dad. There was a, there was a great moment. Um, you'd appreciate this. Um, with Timber Robin, when we were having a chat very similar to this, and, and one of his favorite films was Stuart Little. Ooh, and it was cute. revealed, like one of his friends, like when he was an adult, like one of his friends was like, do you think that you like Stuart Little because you were an orphan? And he was like, <laughs> I'd never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's at that point in the chat where I was like, okay, wait, you're an orphan? Are we having, you're, you're, and then uh, it, it, it had not oh, been wow. revealed. And I was like, oh, this is such a wow. great opportunity to talk through these things. So true is what movies say, eh? Oh, yeah. That was lovely. Um, our, our last film is um, the film you would settle down with, which is a, sometimes a tough one. Yeah. Ach, Vietni. Okay. So I'm a, really struggling with that answer right now. Sure. I've been thinking about it now. While we were talking, I still had it in the back of my head. What film would I settle with? Meaning like... Well, it's just the one that you can always come back to. The one that, you know... the. If, if you just had to watch one film or, you know, it's like, it's one of those, like, what do you think is the greatest? I mean, it could be something like Little Mermaid, yeah. for example. Well, I would say that would always be my, my go-to. Do you, do you remember Spaceballs? Yeah. Yes, we watched Spaceballs, eh? <laughs> that was a comfort video for us. Yeah, the the Bioscope um, has now started screening it every year on Star Wars Day. Really? You know, which is the 4th of May. I prefer, yeah, I prefer. Because there's so much Star Wars balls. stuff that's now on Disney Plus. Yeah. You know, um, at one point for many years, we screened this particular um, somewhat hard to find documentary, but that's now on Disney. Um, so then we thought, no, we've got to find something else for Star Wars Day. So we did Spaceballs, so which is the, you know, silly parody Spoof, movie yeah. of, of, of Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. But, but okay, so I, I watched um, Patch Adams the other day. Okay. I just love Robin Williams. I, uh, he, uh, to me, film is great with like a smile and a tear at yeah. the same time. When you get both. Yeah. yeah. And that's definitely, um, yeah. that's the kind of acting I want to do also. It's like that. Yeah. That lovely combination life, of the two. balance, you know. No, because sometimes you watch these films that try to be so dramatic and they become this drag through the mud and you're like, that's not what life is. There, yeah. there are these moments of... Um, you know where life can be, still be lighter, or and, yeah. and sometimes the 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 funny is 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 so welcomed and yeah. so enjoyed because everything else is quite dramatic. Yeah, there was a movie called Manchester by the Sea. Oh, I think I've seen it. 
it was quite a dramatic film and I and I could see all by the trailer that this is now very dramatic but everyone was saying it's incredible and what actually um finally got me watching it was someone saying oh no it's not as dramatic as you think like there's there's moments of funny and I was like okay okay now I can oh, watch I, it yeah yeah <laughs> and of course it's fucking heart wrenching yeah. Casey Affleck Michelle Williams oh oh Craig loves it yes I haven't seen it okay yeah. Yeah. Let's rent that okay. to you today. Like it. Because that's what I try and do here at the nice. video store is try watch a uh, try get you to rent a particular movie. So ah, let's good. let's rent you Manchester by the Sea. Done. And um it was a it was a real Oscar film in its time. Like yeah. uh, however many years ago. They were all nominated. I don't even know who yes, won. Craig loves that movie. You'll, he's fuck. actually you'll actually be like, What the fuck, Cindy? I told you about this a hundred times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, but but I think I think isn't it Ben Affleck's brother? Mm, yeah, Casey. yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's quite a movie. Okay, but I think it I makes think that si- be yeah. It. That'll be the movie. Well, that'll be the movie I, I'm going to rent you from the okay. video store today. Yeah. But I think that perhaps at this point, you still have um, the original Little Mermaid yeah, in your heart. Still my heart. Yeah. Uh, that that to me feels like it could be your, your yes your 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 final my film. comfort yeah. movie. Yeah. I, I I also had the. Tape, um, the the VHS, uh, the, yeah, the VHS, but also the tape to play uh, the soundtrack. The songs, yeah. When I did well uh, in my report court in Standard Four, my mom bought the tape for me. Okay. So I knew even the scoring. I love scoring in movies. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I really love. Also, Cook's scoring. I don't know if you know okay. Loki Rothman. Okay. It's, it's incredible. It's it's like really, white must, lotusy kind of feel, mm, or I don't know if, mm, it, but he's really good. Yes, okay, okay. um, now I must keep watching with that in mind. Yeah, keep watching. Yeah, I just I'm very attentive for, uh, on uh, scoring. I always, I always mm. like, oh, why are you making me feel? That? Don't make me feel the way. Yeah, yeah. I'll feel it myself. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. trying to get all sad and cock. It's yeah. don't force me. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I'm really uh, I uh, listen to a soundtrack and and but Little Mermaid soundtrack I knew. Yeah. Off by heart the orchestral parts. Uh, um, uh, yeah. I think that's the one. Yep, that's the one. Okay. Um, lovely. Uh, how does Cook wrap itself up? Is there a second? Is there going to be a second season? Do we know? Well, I mean, there's 10 eps, so the fourth ep is only out now on Showmax. Okay. So there's we're still only, like we're six any... to go. Yeah. Okay. And then is it going to just be encased in the… And then it'll uh, be one? there. Yeah. And then you can basically binge watch it, which is I think what a lot of people are doing. They say they're waiting for it to be there completely. Uh, then they'll watch I like it. Be, I like it being a bit spaced out. Me too. Okay. So it's how many… In, is it going to be in total? 10 episodes. 10 episodes in total. Yeah. And is, is, is it then done at that point? Done, but there's a… There's potential for a, a next season, okay. definitely. Okay, we'll like see. me and Christian, we're talking about like what could happen if yeah. if it's a hard game like to it. be in because you've got to both plan and end and end at yeah. the same time because you don't quite know fantastic how. ending by the way, like uh. mursha twist. Like you go, you think uh. it's this, and you like, uh. oh my god, it's so fantastic. It's just well written. It's yeah. what a what a great just team all over to be part of really Lovely, man yeah so happy for you thank you <laughs> okay and then currently the latest thing is this play the siamese well, twin play well yes what, so what? F- yeah, yeah the play uh we're rehearsing and then i'm I, i'm doing my own projects it's so lacquer uh for otica fear which mm. is the um we just did all the idioms um the launch is coming soon and they were so happy so they gave us and the next uh, Faltoch to work on. So it's me building basically with the puppetry vibes, a oh, little like cool. cartoon world with my hands making it. You know, like I did a puppetry course, a puppet therapy course last year. It's like a course from Spain. So interesting. Like puppet just building. Puppet therapy? Things. Yeah. And For kids ultimately? No, adults. adults. So I learned so much about myself with do this because yeah, we had to make self portrait puppets okay. from anything that's around your house. So the things I've learned from making it and understanding why I used certain materials and the way I manipulated it, it's so fucking interesting. Mm. And then we had to like make a workshop on what kind of workshop would you create with materials and I kinda went to uh actors or actresses my age, um who we're under the pressure of looking a certain way and, um, mm. you know, like uh, insecurities, rejection, like there's a lot of that. Mm. And how to just like self-love at the end of the day. Yeah, mm. Why is that so fucking difficult? 
Jeez. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, and, and just going into, and that's what I discovered through this course, which is amazing. Oh, I'd love to just do something about that one day. Oh, lovely. And I also have a, a series coming up, which I'm not allowed to say anything about right now because I okay. just heard that I got the part. So okay. that'll come later. But. <sighs> Like a man. Yeah. But it's nice knowing that you've got something in the in the gun, you yeah. know. But like, even if that wasn't, I just enjoy playing. Eh? That's what I want to do for a living is is play. Who the fuck told us we can't make money and play? Yeah. You know, I I just refuse to to yeah. accept that. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely man. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll keep playing. And yeah. we'll see you soon. Thank you. This was fun. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> All right, lekker chat, lekker lekker person. She's lovely, <laughs> happy. Yeah, <laughs> we need more of that. Yeah, we do, we do, we do. Um, what uh, what's what's giving you life these days, Gaddy? So the most exciting thing is X Men '97 on Disney Plus. Oh, okay. See, so from like '92 to '97, there was that X Men cartoon series that was an Mnet. Yes. I remember that. I remember often having to go and and sort of do stuff on Saturday morning. So I wasn't too much a like watch comics and cartoons all day, but. Uh, I, I do remember that show. I don't think I ever really watched it. So, you know, I thought I really watched it. And then to catch up on this, I watched, there was like a TLDR on like a summary of every episode. And I'm like, I don't remember a single thing. Yeah. Like I remember watching it, but it was, it was quite complicated, especially for a kid's show. Okay. So, so the original X-Men was in the nineties and what have they done now? So it ended on a cliffhanger. They never really wrapped up the show. So okay. they've just kind of taken off exactly where the show left in 1997 and but, just made new episodes now. And but they've done it in the style of of it being made in the nineties. Yeah, and obviously it feels like they've it's kind of fixed and done properly on a computer, but it's made to look like it was okay. just like not really just taken as it was and they finished it up and it looks amazing. A lot of the same voice actors. Okay. Because you were a, a person who who read comics I've yeah. been to your house you've got you've got piles and piles of comics so X-Men wasn't necessarily what I was more into like Superman and DC but my cousin was a big X-Men fan so okay. I remember reading a lot of those series in the comic form and then they made it into the TV show okay. and so yeah it's just it's so special the characters are exactly as how, how I remembered them okay. and yeah okay this is on Disney Plus yeah but actually, my question to you was more like, what's giving you life? What What are you enjoying at the moment? You've just celebrated your birthday. Just, yep. As, as we mentioned before, I've got engaged. So it's my first birthday with my fiance, who oh. we almost share a birthday with. Oh, when is Jess's birthday? So hers was yesterday. Oh. Mine was Sunday. Hers was yesterday. And then we threw a little party for the pugs. Yes. And, um, okay. So Gad, for those who don't know, Gad uh, has a delightful pug in his life. Which I helped name, <laughs> called called Shaniqua, fat little pug, and um, and so yeah, you you put on a show uh, about a week ago now at um, in Smoking Kills, Smoking Kills in Melville, yeah. Okay, so. and, and the money went to pug rescue. Yeah, and I think it's important to mention for all of those who are like, what? Um, you know, most most dog breeds have themselves a rescue or some kind of focus on them specifically as a breed and i think pug is one that you think why would there be a pug rescue and and it's people, why would people get rid of a pug i mean they, well the problem is crazy. a lot of people do right yeah. so that's why pug rescue is what it is and it needs a lot of support because people buy these these dogs and then they realize they perhaps don't want them because they there are a lot of work in some way. I mean, they're absolutely adorable, but yeah, they they make a noise and they shed everywhere. I remember once she was on my lap in the car, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh God, I could never have this." Yeah, no, she's. I mean, they're, they're special dogs, but um, I think like the same thing like Dalmatians. Every time one of those Dalmatian movies come out, hundreds of these dogs get adopted, and people like as they grow up, they're like, "Oh, these are huge dogs, and they take up a lot of space and yeah, yeah. physically and mentally." Yeah. Okay. And so and so. Yeah, you were able to raise some money, which is great, man. Well done. Thank you. No, it's cool. It's an important part of our our 
our lives, the, the dogs and the dog charities. As, as Short Straw, we've also put up our hand to start a, a, an animal foundation. We just found ourselves often being asked to play shows and do charity shows. And often it was a strange thing. Do you remember that? We would sort of go like, wait, what? Who's this for? What's this for? Yeah, and, I mean, a lot of the times you donate money to charity and that just goes to paying people's... Uh, like, yeah. And so we, we made a call as a band to to do our own charity work. And then we realized humans are the worst. We've always used uh, dog iconography in, in the band of Short Straw. And so it, it made sense that, that, you know, we focus on the dogs. 100%. And so we've taken great joy in, in doing stuff under the name The Bowsy Foundation and giving that money to, to dog charities. And it's heartbreaking when you visit them and they tell you stories. I mean, remember that one, I think it was the lab rescue where the woman was like it's not a strange thing to get a call from like a real estate agent because a family has left a house like a normal house and the estate agent has found that the dog is still there you hear this all the time dogs cats left behind like they've immigrated or they've gone or they've moved just made no effort and they've, they've given a whole bunch of food left hopefully and then the estate agent's got to like find a place for this dog. No, it's just Jesus awful. Jesus Christ. But anyways, okay, what else are we enjoying? Okay, so there's X, it's called X-Men 97. X-Men 97, yeah. Best enjoyed on a Saturday morning with a bowl of cereal, yeah. even if you are almost 40. So the, all, all the original <laughs> episodes are on Disney Plus, so you okay. can catch them, catch up. Oh, uh, cool. And then, and then this carries just on. Like nothing ever happened. Oh, uh, cool. Okay, yeah. uh, what else? So there's another show on, on Netflix called Bodies, which I've been meaning to watch for a long time. Bodies. Bodies. Because I really, like, one of my favorite things ever is Dark, that German yes, show on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, you've spoken a lot so about I that. often, like, go on these Facebook pages and they're like, what do you recommend if I'm like, I've watched Dark, I need something else. And everyone's like, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And it's a British show. Oh, they, but the show, is the show called Bodies or is it called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? So there's a movie called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. It's got uh, nothing to do with uh, the... Oh, okay. Because I have I've seen that. Which I had seen quite... That was quite fun. Oh, I like okay, that. Cool. Okay. This but is just called just Bodies. Bodies. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's eight or ten episodes and it's kind of like a time travel uh, murder mystery. Okay. So it's set in four different time periods and each of the... Or three... Uh, and each of the detectives are solving a murder that is the same murder. This body appears in like a courtyard. Okay. And it's the same courtyard, but just in different time periods. Okay. And then the cops have to solve it and figure out. Okay. But they don't know about the other ones. They start to figure it out. And it's... Uh, like vastly different times? Are we talking like... Yeah, so like 18, 18, 19, 19, 30 modern times and then like 40 years in the future. Okay. Yeah. It is a very, it's a serious show? Yeah, very serious. Okay. Yeah, you, it's one of those you have to like really, you can't be on your phone while It's not a second screen show. It's yeah, not I a was, second screen show. I was about show. to say, there's the, that term is being coined, which is, which is bizarre. Have you heard that term? Yeah. The second screen. Yeah. It's not, when, when someone was making a TV show, they said that one of the streamers cr- critiqued and said it's not second screen enough. And they were like, what does that mean? Yeah. No, and like I found at, at one point, like I picked up my phone to read a message. I'm like, Whoa! I just missed so much, and then you have okay. to rewind, and okay. and like is, because it's like everyone dresses differently from the eighteen nineties. You're like, hold on, is that the same character from like two thousand and sixty? Is it the then? same people? Um, like it's a multiverse. Well, like I, I don't want to spoil too much, okay. but like okay. people are going back and like back in time, and okay. and like they relate. Like like Doc, there's a lot of like okay. incestuousness. It's giving me it's giving me some uh, Twelve Monkey vibes. Very much so. Yeah, it's okay. in that same vein. Yeah, Twelve Monkeys was that very cool movie in the '90s with Bruce Willis where he like sees himself be killed. Yeah. Which is based on a very cool black and white film. La Jate. La Jate. Yeah, spot the two kids that went to film school. <laughs> yeah. Um, just talking about these terms, these interesting terms. I'm going to take a little sidetrack for a moment. We are busy looking um, at uh, honeymoon options. And um, there was one place in the Maldives which uh, says in what it offers, it offers something called a social media butler. <laughs> is this the guy who's going to take photos for you for a Instagram? dedicated person in the staff who will like take photos of you <laughs> I mean that seems necessary what a weird <laughs> world we live in where there's like second screen you know like 
content being referred to as you know second screen or well, you can, having you a can, social media. You can media focus on butler. just the um, the choreography for your TikTok dances. You don't have to yeah. worry about where you put a. And so obviously, this guy would know like the best spots and how to best angle it, and but he'll be the dude that'll take the photos and film the reels and. That's crazy. Hey, what a weird time to be alive. I mean, often you see people with these travel videos or, or just like these social media girls and you're like who who's filming this stuff mostly the boyfriend yeah yeah <laughs> they work very hard yeah <laughs> um is there anything else that you're enjoying you oh you took um young corbin to watch kung fu panda kung fu panda 4 kung fu panda 4 yeah i uh i didn't i wasn't able to join you guys it was at a special screening at the offices of uip which is the distributor i just had a little bit too much work to do so i missed it um, but you got a chance to see it before everyone else. It it now is in cinemas. Yeah, um, it was super charming. I mean, I I love those original movies. Jack Black is. I watched the first one and then I jumped off the train. I, I I'm pretty sure I've seen the other two. Okay. I mean, this fourth one didn't not make sense. So. Okay, you could probably watch it on its own. You don't. Yeah. Need, you don't really need to have seen the others. It'll just enrich the backstory. I mean, I think you should see at least the first one to get an sure, idea. Sure, 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 sure. But yeah, the voice acting is so spot on and uh, oh, Corbin was, he was loving it. I love um, the fact that once um, Jack Black was being called, not called out, but there was a conversation with him about, he was recently in China. You know, this is to promote one of the, one of the Kung Fu Panda films. Um, and he just pointed out the absurdity of the fact that he had to travel to China to promote something Kung that Fu he's Panda. not in. Because mm -hmm. it's like he's not acting, and at that point they've dubbed his voice, so yeah, it's I, a different voice act. So it's like yeah, I'd, I'd never really <laughs> thought about it, but I, the first time where we were in tour in Europe, I saw a poster for it was a Pixar or a DreamWorks movie, mm. and I recognized the artwork. And then there were like twenty names of actors, and I'm like, oh wait. This, this is very different here. This yeah, well, also technic yeah, so technically he's not in that version. Yeah. But I mean, I guess he inspired the actor. I mean, expi inspired the character. Yeah. But you know, So I totally get the machine. But I just think it's just funny that a guy like Jack Black will travel around the world to um, promote a, a version of a movie he's not even in. Yeah. <laughs> and then totally owning the, the cover of Baby One More Time. Yeah, I saw that on the internet. What was that all about? I don't know. It doesn't have anything to do with the movie. But where did he do it? Just write it like the end, end credits as they roll. So like the movie ends and then it's like, hit me baby one more time. Oh, it's in the movie. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just not even really. They just like slapped it on at the end. But then they've been using that to promote the movie. Oh, Jack Black singing Britney Spears. Yeah. Okay, weird. Yeah. Lovely, man. Is there anything else? So yeah, um, I finished Sweet Home, Sweet that season uh, two. You were talking about Sweet Home. What, that is on? Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. And that is the Korean horror. horror well, it started show. as a zombie kind of thing, but then it evolved to monsters, and now the monsters have evolved to even more complicated monsters. Oh, God. And yeah, like I was chatting to you earlier. Like, is, it, it, is it a dark hole? Is it, is it, I don't know. It's is it a bit fun. depraved, or is it? No, it's super fun, and it's okay. light. And uh, I had to watch many YouTube videos to explain what was going on, because like the, the characters come back at the end of season two, and it's like, Oh, hold on. I don't think I've seen him since season one, maybe. Okay. And they're like, it was it a bit complicated? Yeah, and I think season three is going to be even more complicated. Okay. Because they're in, at the end, they're already like, season three will be back in summer 2024. So okay. it's definitely coming. Sweet Home. Sweet Home. Strange name. Yeah. Does it make sense the, if you've the, watched it? The name. Yeah. Well, the first season takes place in an apartment building. Okay. So I guess everyone kind of bands together and it's their home, which they're protecting. Okay. And then by season two, they've like kind of moved to a different home, but the group is trying to stay together. So okay. it's more of a metaphor. Okay. Um, speaking of cool Asian content, um, just to once again reiterate the fact that The Boy and the Heron, the, the Academy Award winning um, animated film from Studio Ghibli, which everybody knows and loves, um, is coming to the Bioscope. It's it's confirmed and it's happening and tickets are on sale and some screenings are even almost close to being sold out, which Ooh, is very awesome. exciting. So um, if you listen to the video store somewhat religiously, then you could very easily be someone who is excited about the boy <laughs> in the hair. And I'm just going to take a stab at the fact that you uh, are... are likely to be
be excited about that. And so especially if you are in Joburg, um, this is a, a nice chance to just let you know, especially before m- more screenings sell out, um, it's a chance to get your tickets. So that's at the thebioscope.co.za. Look for the poster in the coming attractions. When's it coming? Uh, it is like mid-April. Mid-April. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah Zaki never misses. So. No, this looks amazing. And it looks, and of course, it's not like it's coming and it hasn't won anything. It's like it's won him Golden Globes. It's won him the, the Oscar. Oscar this yeah. year. So it's like, it's not shit. We know it's not shit. Okay. Oh, that should be a goodie. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thanks guys, and thanks for thanks for the lovely day, Gaddy. Oh. Appreciate you. Oh, thank you. It's Rusty. always nice to catch up. I think you're in an exciting time in your life. Absolutely. You, you're becoming a a real grown up. Yeah, <laughs> it's very <laughs> exciting. Um, cool. And thank you for listening thus far. We are the video store at co.za. For those who don't know, um, give us a subscribe if this is your first listen, and we hope to. See you again next week. We've got um, some really great guests um, on the way. Uh, it's, it's all very exciting. And, uh, and we hope we can just be here to help you figure out what to watch. At the end of the day, that's what we're doing. Yeah, we try. We try. We try. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. See you next week. Cheers, Gaddy. Bye.